Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how Jesus never taught about hell. Now, growing up as a Christian, I remember hearing this popular saying, it went like this. Jesus taught about hell more than anyone else in the Bible. And I would hear this from pastors and from people in my Christian community. And then I would read it in my English translation of the Bible. And so I just assumed that this is what Jesus was talking about. And my belief about hell, my preconceived notion of hell as this place of eternal conscious torment in the afterlife for sinners was being imposed onto the text. And so I would read about these passages in the Gospels where Jesus is apparently talking about this place and the afterlife called hell. And like I said, in my English translation of the Bible, because I was reading the word hell, the English word hell, I just assumed that that's what Jesus was talking about. And after this, I started to really talk about it a lot once I realized this, what I thought was true at the time, this, this notion that Jesus taught about hell more than anyone else in the Bible. When I learned this, I started talking about hell a lot more than, than what I was, and I started preaching about it and, and teaching it and using it in my evangelism. And I thought that I needed to warn as many unbelievers as, po as possible about this reality of hell because Jesus thought it was a big deal, so I should as well, and I did. But then I got to college, and I started to rethink my faith. I started to really analyze what I believed and why I believed what I believed. And so there were so many different doctrines and teachings that were taught to me or, or told to me. And it was, you know, I had to believe in these things. Like, for example, with the doctrine of hell, me being taught that growing up as a Christian, I was told that if I don't believe in hell, then I'm not, I'm not a real Christian. And, and if I'm not a real Christian, then I'm not saved. And if I'm not saved, then I'm going to hell. And so there were so many of these different things that I was just told at a very young age, and I, and I had to believe in them. And I was afraid not to believe in them. I was afraid to ask questions. I was afraid to, to you know, rethink and, and form my beliefs independently. And so when I got to college, I just, I started thinking critically really for the first time in my life. And I, and I really wanted to know for myself why I believed what I believed. And so what I started doing was I started to study the Bible uh, in the original language that it was written in, especially the New Testament. And so the New Testament was originally written in Greek. And I knew this before I got to college. But when I got to college, I really started to study this stuff out. I started to examine a lot of these passages, a lot of these words that, these Greek words that were translated to English words, and the English words really didn't, they didn't encapsulate, I guess, what the original Greek word was actually saying. And so there was a lot of mistranslations, and that caused a lot of confusion. And all I wanted was clarity. I wanted to know what the text was actually saying. And so this is why I started to do this in-depth study. And during this time, I was really interested to know what the Greek word was, especially in the New Testament, especially when we read about Jesus talking about it in reference to hell. And what I found was that when Jesus in the Gospels is talking about hell, apparently, it's almost always this Greek word Gehenna. And at the time, I knew nothing about Gehenna. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it meant. But this started this uh, interest in studying the this word Gehenna. And so I started studying it. And what I realized was that Gehenna is something that we find all over the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament. And Gehenna was a literal valley on the earth just outside the city of Jerusalem. And it had a horrific history in the Jewish tradition. And so this is what Gehenna was. It actually had nothing to do with this place of eternal conscious torment and the afterlife for sinners, like the Christian version of hell that I was taught. And so now I was like, wait a second. So every time the English word hell is used in the Gospels, for this Greek word Gehenna, this is actually a major mistranslation because uh, 
Gehenna has nothing to do with this place of hell that I'm picturing and imagining every time I read hell in my English translation of the Bible and every time I read about Jesus talking about it. And so this is an issue and this is something that I need to look more into and I did. And so what I learned about Gehenna was this. And before I get into that, let me just say this. Part of me really uh, learning more about the Bible and understanding what it actually says came with me being open to uh, studying the text with exegesis and with this honest approach and, and knowing that, okay, context, broad context is key and I really need to understand, you know, who these scriptures were being written to, audience relevance, the time period, the culture, uh, who was writing these scriptures, all those things matter. And I think, I know for myself growing up as a Christian, there were so many times where I just completely, completely disregarded all that. And I just, I read the Bible like it was this univocal, inerrant handbook that I could just pick out any, I could cherry pick any scripture and make it totally applicable for me. And later on, I learned that I just, I can't do that. We can't do that because that is not interpreting the text with an honest hermeneutic. That is actually reading the text, interpreting the text through eisegesis instead of exegesis. And, th and through eisegesis, that's where we start to impose our own preconceived notions uh, onto the text. And then we use the text, we use certain passages or certain verses to support what we already believe. And so that's exactly what I was doing with hell. And so when I would read the the English word hell in my English translation of the Bible throughout the entire Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, I would just assume that this is what it meant and that this is what the original scriptures were talking about. But like I've talked about in other videos, obviously the, the English word hell is not in the original text of the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament. And so there are four words that have been translated to the one word, the one English word hell. And these four words, none of them mean what the English word hell means, or at least hell in the sense that is believed and taught in Christianity today, which again is this place of eternal conscious torment for sinners in the afterlife. And so those four words that have been translated are the, it's the, the first word is the Hebrew word Sheol, which we find in the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament. And then it's the Greek word Hades. And then it's the Greek word Gehenna. And then it's the Greek word Tartarus. And if you haven't seen my video, Is Hell For Real? I'll put that in the description below. Please go back and watch that video because I really explain in depth what those four words really mean and how they have nothing to do with this one word hell. And so, translating all four of these different words throughout the Bible into this one word, hell, becomes problematic. And again, I discussed that in, in that video on uh, called Is Hell For Real? And so anyways, going back to, I think I was talking about Gehenna, what I learned about Gehenna and what it was. So when I started to study Gehenna, what I, what I found was that Again, it's all throughout the Hebrew Bible, and Gehenna was this literal place, literal valley on the earth, and it had a horrific history in the Jewish tradition. And we read about Gehenna a lot in the book of Jeremiah. Now, in the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament, it was known as the Valley of Hinnom, and so Gehenna is just the Greek translation of the Valley of Hinnom, same place, same valley. And so in the book of Jeremiah, what we read about is this is the place where some of the Israelites were sacrificing their children to the pagan deity Molech. And the God of the Hebrew Bible was extremely against this. And so the God of the Hebrew Bible curses, the, curses this valley and says that from this point on, this valley would be known as the Valley of Slaughter. And then he tells the, some of the Israelites who were in disobedience he tells them that because of their disobedience, that they would experience some kind of future judgment in that valley. And he says that they would be defeated by their enemies and that their bodies would end up in this valley of slaughter, in this valley of Hinnom, and their bodies would be eaten by worms and wild animals. 
And so from this point on, this Valley of Hinnom, Gehenna, became this place that represented death and destruction and judgment of the worst kind. But it was a judgment that would occur on the earth that had nothing to do with some kind of afterlife judgment. Okay, so this was a, a judgment on the earth that had to do with physical bodies being uh, destroyed, burned, eaten by wild animals. Now, why is this important? Because we have to understand the, the different views of the afterlife in the Jewish tradition, especially in the first century, especially during Second Temple Judaism, when these gospel when the gospel accounts were written the canonical gospels were written that we read about in the bible where apparently jesus is talking about hell more than anyone else in the bible so during this time while there were different views of the afterlife the main view that we read about in the hebrew bible especially early on is this notion of sheol now what is sheol sheol is known as the grave or the place of the dead and in the Jewish tradition, it was believed that everyone went there after death, both the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, the unrighteous would just cease to exist once they were in this place of Sheol. But the righteous, at some point in the future, would experience a bodily resurrection where they would live forever on the earth. And so that was a belief held in the Jewish tradition. And not every Jew, not every first century Jew believed in this, but this was a very popular view that many of them did believe in. And so when Gehenna is mentioned in the New Testament scriptures, especially in the canonical gospels, when this word is mentioned to, let's say that Jesus's audience was primarily first century Jews, it was a Jewish audience who all would have understood Sheol and especially the, the Valley of Hinnom, Hinnom because it was a valley that was despised. Many feared it. And again, it was a literal valley just outside the city of Jerusalem. And so when Jesus starts to use this, when Jesus starts to talk about Gehenna and his first century Jewish audience would have heard this, what they would have what what they would have thought of was this place where the physical body would be completely destroyed and why is this so important because for a first century jew the worst fate imaginable is having your entire body destroyed either by fire or eaten by worms or wild animals and if this happened to the physical body, then what would this mean? This would mean that there would be no hope for a bodily resurrection. And that's why ha having a proper burial for a first century Jew was very important. And so when Jesus talks about Gehenna and he talks about the body being thrown into the fires of Gehenna, what he is saying is, okay, so, so for example... The, one of the most popular passages that have been used to support the, the notion that Jesus taught about hell is Mark 9. And I think it's Mark 9, 43 through 48. But in this passage, Jesus is using um, hyperbolic language and metaphor to illustrate a point. And the point is, whatever is causing you to sin, get rid of it because it could lead to you being thrown into this valley. And if you're thrown into this valley and you're not and you don't have a proper burial, what will this mean? It will mean that you will not be raised on the last day and you will not have a bodily resurrection and, and you will not live on the earth forever. Again, that was the first century Jewish belief about what was going to happen after death. And so in this passage, Jesus says something like if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off because it's better for you to enter into life with one hand rather than you be thrown into Gehenna with both hands. In other words, with your entire body. And in the English translation, it actually says hell in that passage. But in the Greek, it says Gehenna. And then he says the same thing about the foot and 
and then the I. And then, and then the very last line, I believe, at the end of that passage, when he talks about being thrown into Gehenna, is this. He says, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Now, so many people, so many Christians have taken that one line and they said, look, there it is. Jesus talked about hell. Jesus talked about being uh, burned alive forever. It says it right there in Mark Mark 9. And again, if you know, if we're reading this in the English translation, then yeah, it could seem like, okay, Jesus is talking about hell, being thrown into hell three times. And then the last thing he says about this place called hell is that it's the place where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. So yeah, that can kind of sound like this place of eternal conscious torment, this version of hell that is taught in Christianity today. But when we really examine this passage more in depth, what we find is that, okay, in the Greek, in the original uh, uh, writing of the scripture, it, it's Gehenna, number one. Number two, this line that apparently Jesus quotes at the end of this passage is Isaiah. It's a, it's a direct quote. Jesus is directly quoting from Isaiah. It's Isaiah 66, 24. And if we go back and we read that passage, what we find, and I don't know exactly what it says. It says something like, and they will go out and see the corpses, the bodies in, in this place. And then it says, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. And so this saying of where the worm never dies and, and where the fire is never quenched is something that we see throughout the Hebrew Bible. And it's simply, it's, it's, it's always... It's it's a it's a metaphor. It's 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 a saying that is that is in reference to judgment on the earth. Always, if we go and look at it in the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament, we find that it's always the saying that is being used in reference to judgment on the earth. That has absolutely nothing to do with the afterlife. And so, one of the things that we read about in Jeremiah is that the God of the Hebrew Bible talks about how there would be some kind of future judgment. And it would occur in that area where the bodies would be thrown in that valley. And so Jesus comes and Jesus starts talking about this future judgment, this this future, uh, yeah, this judgment on the earth that would occur in the in his generation. And he prophesies about this in Matthew 23, Matthew 24, Matthew 25. And it actually happened in 70 AD. Which, was, which would have been in that time frame of when he said it would happen, where the Roman army would come in and destroy the temple. And guess what happened? The bodies of those who were killed were in, ended up in that valley of Hinnom, right outside the city, right after the city, right after the temple was destroyed. And so this is something that Jesus was warning about, warning his audience about nearly 40 years before it happened in the in the gospel of matthew and in other places but this was all in reference to some kind of judgment that would occur on the earth where the physical body would be completely destroyed again we have to think in terms of how would a first century jewish audience understand what was being said okay and for them they did not have this view of the afterlife like we find today in christianity where it's this dualistic, okay, you die and then you either go to heaven or hell forever, you face a judgment, and then it's either eternal conscious torment and you can't escape it, or it's eternal bliss in heaven where you're just worshiping Jesus forever, okay? That was not a view of the afterlife. That was not how the first century Jewish audience of Jesus would have been thinking. And so for them, it was Sheol Everyone went there, or Hades, everyone went there, the place of the dead, the grave. And if your body was destroyed, which again, Gehenna represents the body being completely destroyed, that would mean that with the bodies destroyed, that the soul is also destroyed. Because if that happens, then there is no opportunity, there's no hope for a bodily resurrection where the soul or life force energy can resurrect in the body and live forever on the earth. So, that's what we have to keep in mind when we see this word Gehenna used. The other thing I wanted to mention was this. So the Gospels, let's just say the canonical Gospels or the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, this is primarily where we find uh, 
Jesus talking about Gehenna. And what we have to keep in mind is that Jesus spoke Aramaic. He didn't even speak Greek. And so what happened was, you know, Jesus, Jesus didn't write anything down. So the, the first gospel or the first canonical gospel that we have is the gospel of Mark. And that was written around 70 AD. And so that's 40 years between the time Jesus lived on the earth and from when that first gospel was written. And so how can we be sure that what Jesus actually said and taught was recorded exactly how it was and, and how he said it and what he meant 40 years prior? Because you've got 40 years, 40 to really 60 to 70 years of oral tradition where these stories are being passed from one person to the next, and then eventually it gets written down, and eventually it turns into a gospel account around 70 AD. And then, you know, the, the four gospels, the four canonical gospels were written between 70 AD and around 100 AD. And so we don't actually know what Jesus said. We don't actually know if what's being written in these gospels was actually coming out of the mouth of Jesus. This could have been... Uh, followers of Jesus, uh, Jewish followers of Jesus who were just writing stories about Jesus. And then they had these different influences and they started, you know, almost adding. And, and I mean, think about what happens. You go 40 years, 40 to 60 years of just stories being passed from one person to the next. What's going to happen naturally? The stories are going to change. There's going to be additions. There's going to be edits. And so that's what we have to leave room for. And so I'm not saying that that what we read about, like in, in these canonical gospels, are exactly what Jesus said, because I don't know. But what we do know is that Jesus was a first century Jew. He was a Jewish rabbi. And there was not a belief, there was not an afterlife belief like we have today of this dual, dualistic notion of heaven and hell, especially hell being this place of eternal conscious torment. So it's likely that if Jesus talked about uh, the, the afterlife or if Jesus talked about you know what happens after a person dies, he would have been referring to Sheol or he would have been referring to um, you know some kind of futuristic bodily resurrection for the righteous but we don't know that for sure there were many other not many but there were other views of the afterlife like i mentioned earlier that were held in the jewish tradition and so i leave room for that but the reason i say what i say about and the reason i'm making this video is because what we do have again jesus did not write anything down and, and these gospels that we have are really stories about him that were written by people that didn't even know him 40 to 70 years after he lived, but that's what we have to go by. And if we're going by that, if we're going by these passages that have been used to support the idea that Jesus taught about hell more than anyone, then let's examine those. And that's what we're doing. And so when we examine those, what we find is that Jesus actually never talked about hell at all. Just by going by those. What did he talk about? He talked about Gehenna. And like I've talked about in this video, Gehenna was a literal valley outside the city of Jerusalem that had a horrific history in the Jewish tradition. And when a first century Jew heard about Gehenna and heard about the body being thrown into the fires of Gehenna, for them, it did not mean that they would be consciously burned forever and ever and ever. No, for them, it meant that the body would be destroyed. And that if the body was destroyed, completely annihilated, either by fire or by wild animals, this would mean no hope for a bodily resurrection, and no bodily resurrection would mean that they would not live forever on the earth. And so that's what's going on in the Gospels. That was the popular view of what happens after death during the first century in Judaism. Now, there are there there's many other places in the Gospels where we read about, you know, it's sometimes it's parables sometimes it's just different sayings where jesus jesus will say things like uh and we find this a lot in parables you know uh, the weeping and gnashing of teeth okay that is simply a hebrew idiom that just means anger and frustration and we find that again in the hebrew bible in the old testament and it's never used all these sayings that appear to be 
And that I think, you know, there's so many sayings like that saying, and then where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. We hear that today, especially Christians hear that today. And because there's, there's such, there's a deep programming to believe in the afterlife a certain way, and there's all these preconceived notions of hell, we just automatically equate these sayings, these, these Jewish uh, apocalyptic and symbolic and hyperbolic sayings that we read about in the Bible, we just automatically equate these sayings with our version of hell, which really was not formed until the early centuries of Christianity. And so I've made videos on this too. You know, the, the, the view of hell that is mainstream in Christianity is a post-biblical idea of hell. And it was influenced by uh, Greek and Roman and Egyptian mythology that came, you know, uh, many years before Christianity, before the Christian uh, movement was formed. But the, the, the idea of hell, the notion of hell that we have today in Christianity is post-biblical. It was formed in the early centuries of Christianity, and we do not find it in the Bible. We do not find it at all in the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament. We do not find it at all in the teachings of Jesus, the teachings that we have. And we do not find it at all in Paul's letters. And so to me, that's really something for us to think about. And I encourage all of you to do your own research, to take time with this and study it out for yourselves. But going back to Jesus, like I said, you know, there's so many different sayings and idioms and hyperbolic language and apocalyptic literature that Jesus is apparently in the Gospels. He's directly quoting from the uh, from the Hebrew Bible. And if we go back and we read these sayings, we read these idioms in the Hebrew Bible, what we find is that most of the time they're always in reference to some kind of judgment that was coming on the earth, like we read about in Jeremiah. And, and what I mentioned in Jeremiah can be found in Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 19. So go back and read that. And what you'll find is that this was a, a judgment that was coming on the earth that had nothing to do with the afterlife. So all these different sayings and idioms that we read about in the New Testament scriptures, especially the Gospels, they're not talking about the afterlife, or they're not talking about this place of hell in the afterlife. It's all about judgment, a judgment that was coming, and Jesus was warning his audience. In these Gospels, what we read about is that Jesus is warning his audience about a judgment that was coming in their lifetime, like he says in Matthew 24, and that it would occur in 70 uh, or, or yeah, it, it would occur in his in his generation, and something did happen in 70 A.D. And so these gospels were written after 70 A.D. And so who knows? You know, were whoever wrote these gospels were they writing them after this this event happened, and and were they calling it a judgment from God? Or you know, we don't we don't exactly know because again. Um, Jesus did not write anything down, and these gospels, these canonical gospels that we have about Jesus were written after 70 AD, and so that would have been really towards the end of the, the generation that Jesus apparently prophesied about, and he apparently prophesied, you know, would experience some kind of judgment, some kind of uh, destruction in, in their lifetime. So all those prophecies that were written that apparently Jesus said were written, like I'm saying, after 70 AD, after that event actually happened when the Roman army destroyed the temple. And when you read about the event in 70 AD when the Roman army destroyed the temple, and, and you read about the events that, that came right before it and, 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 and during it and even after it, uh, it's very, very, very close. It's almost identical to what Jesus apparently said, and we find that recorded in uh, mainly the, the, the Gospel of Matthew in, in chapter 24. And then there's also Jewish historians like Josephus that write about many of the things that Jesus apparently had said that is written in this Gospel of Matthew. So that's something else to look into. But again, when any kind of reference is, is when, when Gehenna is used, especially in the New Testament scriptures, especially by Jesus, it's in reference to 
a judgment, something that would take place on the earth, some kind of destruction of the body that would um, not allow for a bodily resurrection. And so I don't know if Jesus actually said this. I don't know exactly what he believed about the afterlife. I'll be making other videos soon about some other potential scenarios, especially if we take the route of Jesus being a Jewish mystic, uh, how that would impact his view of the afterlife, how that would change really how he understood the body and, and the soul and, and what happens after death. And so, again, I will, I will be making a video soon on that because I have a lot to talk about as far as that whole notion of Jesus being a mystic and what that would mean. So I think I've covered everything. I'm trying to think if I left anything out. I will say this, you know, this is, again, I'm making this video to explain how Jesus never taught about hell in the sense of this place of eternal conscious torment in the afterlife, going by what we have and going by what the views of a first century Jew would have been about the afterlife. So that's what I'm going by. And I'm not telling you what I believe. I'm not telling you. So all these different beliefs that I'm sharing, these Jewish beliefs about, you know, Sheol, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I believe that. I'm just, I, what I'm telling you is what we have to go by from the text. If we analyze the text and we study it with honest hermeneutics and an exegesis, that's what we find. That's what the text is saying. And again, I'm not saying that this is definitely what Jesus said because we don't know. These gospels that we have, these writings that we have about Jesus were written 40 to 70 years after Jesus lived by people that didn't even know him. So they're, they're not eyewitness accounts. These are stories that were told many times and then eventually they were written down. And that's how we got uh, the New Testament scriptures, the, the gospels, the canonical gospels that we have. Okay. So... I believe that when we examine the text, when we examine it with broad context and with exegesis, what we find is that Jesus never taught about hell. So not only did Jesus not talk about hell more than anyone else in the Bible, but he never talked about it at all because it wasn't something that his audience would have believed in or understood. It's not something that him being a first century Jew would have believed in or, or understood because, again, the, the notion of hell that we find today in Christianity is a post-biblical invention that was certainly influenced by uh, mythology and different traditions prior to Christianity. But what the, 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 the image of hell that we have today, for the most part, is a post-biblical invention. It's not something that we find at all in the Bible in the Hebrew Bible, in the New Testament scriptures, uh, in the teachings of Jesus, or the, the teachings uh, and writings of Paul. So, Jesus never taught about hell. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the best way to do so is by subscribing to my Patreon. And when you subscribe to my Patreon, you get access to weekly blogs, video teachings, Q&A, guided meditations, a discount on all my coaching services, and much more. And so that is the best way to support this channel and the content that I'm creating is by subscribing to my Patreon. And so if you're interested in that, I'll put the link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, informative, or insightful, please leave a thumbs up at the bottom of the screen and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.